What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple surprisingly released iOS 18.1 Beta 1 to register developers who are on an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max because this update is all about bringing Apple intelligence to the iPhone for the first time in beta. So you can see it's also not currently available in the EU or China. So we'll get to all that in a moment and we'll show the amazing Apple intelligence features. But I do have to say along with this update, Updates. We did also get iPad OS 18.1 beta 1 and Mac OS Sequoia 15.1 beta 1. Now also we did get the public beta 2 for iOS 18 along with all the other platforms. But in this video we are focusing primarily on 18.1 beta 1 and Apple intelligence. And even if you don't have a compatible device you'll probably want to watch this video because it's pretty impressive what is included so far. So anyways the size of this update came in at just under 640 megabytes so not a very large update which is kind of surprising for what we got. But if we go into check out the build number, settings general about, you can see the new build is 22B5007P. So a P at the end of the build number indicates we have quite a ways to go before the final release as expected because iOS 18.1 will be released after iOS 18.0 most likely, which is coming in mid September. So I would not expect to see iOS 18.1 get publicly released until October. And we'll talk about that more at the end of this video. Okay, so now let's talk about the good stuff. Apple intelligence. That is the main new feature added here in iOS 18.1. And you can see the first change is inside of settings. We now have Apple intelligence in Siri. And if you go into here, you have a toggle for Apple intelligence. However, that is not what you see when you first install this. When you first install this update, you had to join an Apple intelligence wait list. So there's that button right there. And then after that, you get a splash screen that shows you, you know, what's included. So new tools to express yourself. So it says enhance your writing, create personalized images and express yourself in more ways than ever. A new era for Siri and also groundbreaking privacy. So it shows you all of that. And then after that, it will show that you've joined the wait list and it's going to begin downloading right away pretty much. So it looked, took like 30 seconds on the wait list. It wasn't really a traditional wait list, at least not one that I've been a part of. So after that, once it gets downloaded, you will see it does say turn on Apple intelligence and then it goes through another splash screen and tutorial on how to use everything. So let's go ahead and check out Apple intelligence here. So in the main page, you won't really see anything too crazy different in here. You're actually going to see the Apple intelligence features inside of applications where you're typing. So for instance, in the messages application or in the notes application are going to be two of the main areas where I'd suspect that you use the Apple intelligence features, at least the writing tools, which is one of the main things that comes with iOS 18.1. Now we still don't have, you know, uh, generative emojis or Genmoji and a lot of other features, which we'll mention here in a moment, but let's focus on what we do have. So let's say we type something out here and we go to select that. You'll notice that we have new options down here in the predictive text field. So we now have proofread, rewrite, and then we also have the Apple intelligence button right there. Now, if we tap on that, we get our full list of writing tools. So you have proofread, rewrite, you have friendly. So if you wanted to rewrite the text as friendly, you can do that. Professional, if you want to make whatever you wrote out sound more professional, you can do that as well. Or if you wanted it to be more concise, if you wanted this to be a little bit shorter and to the point, you can do that as well. So you have three type of, you know, different ways to rewrite a sentence or paragraph or whatever you're writing out, or email, whatever it is. Then you also have summary, key points, list, and table. So you can create a summary, key points, list, and table out of the selected text right here, which again is just amazing. So let's say we write out a text and then we reread it and we realize that was kind of mean, that was kind of rude. I don't really want to portray that message. I don't want to burn this bridge. Well, we could just select that text and then just say, we want to rewrite that to be more friendly. So now it's going to say quality may vary. So it says it was not designed to handle this type of content, whatever that means. But if you tap on continue, it will do so instead. So now it rewrote that to say something a lot more nice and professional, in my opinion. Now from here, you could also revert back to original. You can retry. So if you did not like what it wrote, you could go ahead and tap on retry and it will try to, you know, put something else in there that you might like better. And you could always revert back to the original. You can retry again. You can share your feedback down here as well. Now, if we tap on done, we could also, you know, redo that from here as well. So if you wanted to make that 
rewritten version, more professional, we can just tap on professional and you can kind of, you know, understand this is going to be an endless game here. You can rewrite this as many times as you want using any of these different kind of, uh, you know, AI tools here for a professional. So this one's kind of long. Let's say we want to make that more concise. It will make that shorter and more to the point. So this is awesome. And I can see myself using this literally every single day, especially for emails. Now, another quick example I'll show you is that if we select all and we go to the Apple intelligence writing tools right here, you can also create a summary key points list and table. So I really like doing the summary. So if you go ahead and tap on summary, if you have a long, you know, a paragraph or story or whatever, it will break it down and give you a quick summary. You can copy that summary. You can replace the original text with the summary, or you can share that. And it's in its own little modal down here, its own little box. And you can do that for key points, lists, and you can even create a table as well. Now it's not just your own writing. You can also go into Safari, for example. And if you select some text here, so we're going to select some text. So we're selecting all this text right here. Now, if you tap, you'll notice that we have writing tools as a pop-up. And if you tap on that, this is where you can also do the same thing that we just showed in notes. So if you just want to get the key points of what this article says, you can do that and it will show you those key points right here. So, you know, obviously very simple right there. And we can do that for summary as well. So if you wanted to summarize that, it will show you a actually a pretty relevant summary. It doesn't show you everything, but it gives you the gist of what the article is about. And you can even have it rewrite or proofread or make it more professional, make it more concise. You could do all of that with other people's text as well, not just the text that you type out. And then the final thing I'll show you with writing tools is Grammarly's competitor. They're a new competitor that's probably going to make me cancel my Grammarly premium subscription. So if you write out something and you just go right here and you go to proofread, you can see it will proofread your text and show you the changes that were made. So we have three changes that were made. Let's see about that. So before but it says there's unnecessary punctuation. So it took care of that. The next one, there's a missing word. So I put in what you think it put in do because it knows what do you think is more grammatically correct. And then it also added a question mark instead of a exclamation point and then a question mark. And none of those were picked up by the default, you know, iOS auto uh, correct. So this was all done from proofread, which is awesome. And it changes it automatically for you. But if you wanted to use the original, you can do that right there. And you could also, you know, revert to original right here, or you can just revert everything back. So if I tap on that, it changes everything back to how it was. But the writing tools are not the only Apple intelligence feature that was added with iOS 18.1. Check this out. Yep, that is the new Siri UI. So look how amazing this looks, especially if you have a dark background, you can really see all the colors there and you can see it moving with your voice. Now there's also a new sound. So listen to this again. So that is the new sound for Siri. There's also a new animation and a new UI when Siri answers your question. So Siri, what time is it in four hours from now? So Siri is still not super smart. I will say that this is not Siri 2.0. As you know, Siri 2.0 is coming in 2025. This is just simply the new UI. So don't expect Siri to be smarter with iOS 18.1 because that is definitely not the case. But let me try that again. So there you go. You can see the new UI and the new kind of flipping animation right there, along with this awesome some look around and you can see we do also have the feedback option down here if you did want to report feedback now there's also a new feature with Siri where if you tap on the bottom bar you can see it kind of lights up there a really slick animation and it shows you and if you tap that again that will pull up Siri so let's try that again let's tap and it will pull up Siri where you can ask Siri you can kind of type to Siri here with this new interface and the moving gradient background, which looks amazing. And again, that animation is so good that we have to see that again. It just kind of pops up out of nowhere. Like it's dark and then it just gets there and then you tap it again. You have to tap it twice and you can see that you can ask Siri now. So what time is it in five hours? So if you send that, you can see it will give you the result right there. Another awesome Apple intelligence feature is the ability to summarize an email. So I just got this email. It's a newsletter. So we can see there's quite a bit of text here in the newsletter. However, at the very top, you can see that we have a summarize button by default. You don't have to tap anything or press anything. It's there by default. And if you tap on that, it will go through and read the message and then leave a summary at the top 
for you. So it takes a minute, but you can see it's a pretty short summary that gets the point across. So this is awesome. And you can also tap on these three dots to share your feedback if it looks good or if it's not good. And even if it's not a newsletter, just like a regular email from somebody, it will show you right here. You know, for instance, Brandon Butch team is asked to consider the blank opportunity and provide any questions or feedback. So, you know, it works for newsletters. It also works for if you're just getting a personal or professional email from another individual. Individual. And you'll also get that summary as the notification on the lock screen from that email as well, which is great. Apple intelligence also brings phone call recording with iOS 18.1 beta one. So if you go to call somebody, you will see we have a new icon in the top left hand corner. If you tap on that, it will send an audible prompt to the other person saying that this call will be recorded. And then you will see that you have this animation here and it says take notes on this call and you can tap on that and it will you know, record in the phone and it will give you a transcript afterwards of that phone call, which is pretty awesome. And you can stop it right here as well without ending the call if you would like. And then it says view saved call right there and you can go into that and you can play back what was said in the call and you could also see a transcript of that as well. Also in settings, if you go into the privacy and security page right here and then go down, you'll see that there's a new option for Apple intelligence report. So that is a new section there and that is on by default. So you do need to, you know, report duration. You can turn that off or you can change it from 15 minutes or seven days. Also the bigger emoji keyboard has returned here with iOS 18.1 as we predicted. So when you tap on emojis, the emoji now show up as larger and you can see them better. Also we have Memoji in this same page right here. So it's no longer an add on when you tap on the plus, you can now see the Memoji to the left of your stickers. And then as far as missing Apple intelligence features, features that are coming in the future, we have Genmoji, which is probably the biggest one. That is where you can use the the image playground to create custom emojis. So the image playground in general is not here in iOS 18.1, which is where you can just generate images from anywhere. So Genmoji and image playground kind of go together. So neither one of those are here in 18.1 beta one. Also the chat GPT integration is not here. So when you trigger Siri or do anything, you will not see chat GPT, at least not in beta one. Also priority notifications are not here just yet. And that is where Apple intelligence uses AI to kind of just detect which notifications are most important. And it bumps those up to the top of your notifications list on your lock screen. And then of course, Siri 2.0 is not here just yet. That's going to include a smarter Siri on screen awareness and in app actions. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance on iOS 18.1 beta one feels very similar to what we've had on the iOS 18 betas so far. So I wouldn't really expect a big change in the performance. So I did run a Geekbench 6 test just for the fun of it. And we scored a 2818 on the single core and a 6882 on the multi-core score. So nothing too crazy, obviously not as good as the most recent iOS 18 beta, iOS 18.0 beta, I should say. So slightly lower on the single core, but it was slightly higher on the multi-core. However, I would not expect a big change in performance and same goes with battery life. Like you can look at my battery life here. I'm at 69%, which is nice. And I would expect battery life actually to be maybe a little bit worse with Apple intelligence, just because there's a lot working on the back end, And of course, all the feedback that you're giving as well as, you know, sending that data back to Apple servers. So I would expect the battery life to be slightly worse here in iOS 18.1 beta one compared to the iOS 18.0 betas, which shouldn't be a big surprise. And of course, I will report back in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday to confirm if the battery life is indeed worse. And of course, talk about more features if we find any. Okay, so now let's talk about what's coming next for Apple. So first off, I would not expect to see iOS 18.1 get released to the public until October. So we have a solid two months of beta testing, I believe, for iOS 18.1. So for that reason alone, I do not think we're going to see another iOS 18.1 beta for at least two weeks. So we're probably looking at the week of August 12th for iOS 18.1 developer beta two. Now, as far as iOS 18.0, so the regular iOS 18 release, especially if you're not on an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you don't have iOS 18.1. So iOS 18 beta five should be coming next week, the week of August 5th, if not on August 5th, itself. So August 5th or 6th seems like a good, you know, date for iOS 18 
beta 5. And then the public beta should come out, you know, within the next 24 to 48 hours after that gets released. I don't think Apple's going to wait as long as they did to release beta 2 for the public beta testers. And by the way, I did just want to point out that iOS 18.1 will be available for all devices. It's just that right now in this first developer beta, it's only available for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. So later betas, we might see, you know, other devices able to get in on the betas. But for right now, it's only available on the 15 Pro and Pro Max because Apple's just simply wanting to test and, you know, get feedback on the Apple intelligence features. But iOS 18.1, when it gets released to the public, will be available for all devices. I would assume that's how Apple has done it every previous year. So that's just something else to keep in mind. But nonetheless, that is iOS 18.1 beta one, a really surprising and really amazing update here with a lot of cool Apple intelligence features with a lot more to come. We should be seeing more Apple intelligence features get added in future betas and of course, future versions of iOS 18. So if you guys want to see those future Apple intelligence features, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.